My dear students, this is ARD, your accounting coach, and the topic of the day that we have is Statement of Changes in Equity. Now, before going this lecture, you must go through my lecture for concepts of Statement of Changes in Equity. Statement of Changes in Equity uh, is a statement made by companies, especially public limited companies. So, if you go through the concepts lecture first and let's go through this question this question relates to a levels and uh, let me read the question for you it is basically a specimen paper question and it is a good question contains uh, most of the adjustments that are being tested in examination uh, I'm reading the question for you. The following information is available about Whittle Ford PLC on 31st December 2011. Uh, there are some balances relating to equity, 500,000 ordinary shares of dollar one each, 500,000. Now, this 500,000 is number of shares and this 500,000 is their value. Obviously, if you multiply 500,000, multiply by one, uh, this gives the total value of shares that is $500,000. If one share were worth $2 each, so if you multiply 500,000 times two, this will give the value of 1 million ordinary share capital. Then we have share premium account. If we issue a share, uh, let's say $1 share, if we issue for 1.5, the extra 0.5 that we are getting from shareholders is known as share premium. Then thirdly, we have general reserve. General reserve uh, is also a reserve and share premium and retained earning is also a reserve. A reserve is something that we keep uh, for rainy days. Uh, if there are some circumstances that the company need uh, some amount, therefore the company transfers some amount in uh, reserves. So share premium, general reserve and retained earning. Uh, retained earning are the profits of the company that have not yet been distributed by the company in the form of dividends. The profits that we have saved for future is known as retained earning. Retained earnings uh, are also known as accumulated profits. But the newer name that the examiner used is retained earning. Further information is given. First of all, let me get through the requirement. Uh, explain what is meant by keeping reserves in their most flexible form. Let's just discuss this adjustment first. Uh, explain what is meant by keeping reserves in their most flexible form. Now, before uh, jumping on this uh, requirement, we may need to understand what does a reserve mean. Uh, if you ever have a uh, drive a uh, car or a bike, ride a motorcycle, you may know that there is a reserve tank in your vehicle. Now, what does the reserve mean? tank help us a reserve tank stores some of the fuel so that if the fuel ends in the main uh, container or the main area of your fuel tank then you have at least some fuel so that you can easily reach to the petrol pump or, or whatever fuel or pump so this is known as a reserve. Similarly, companies also make reserves so as to save themselves in times of crisis or if there are rainy days. So this is known as reserve. So basically, there are two forms of reserves or two types of reserves. One is a revenue reserve and another one is capital reserves. Revenue reserves are the reserves that are made through profits of the company. The company that... Uh, the company, uh, a company that is earning profits can save some of its profits for future use are known as revenue reserves because they are created uh, on a usual basis or routine basis. And the another type of reserve is capital reserve. Capital reserve is being created by capital transactions. Capital transactions are those transactions that are incurred on some one-off basis and these are not frequent transactions so there are two types of revenue reserves in our course one is general reserve and one is retained earning retained earning is made through profits and general reserve is also created by transferring some of the profits from retained earning to general reserve uh, one important thing about revenue reserves is that if you want to pay dividends to the shareholders of the company, 
that dividends are only able to be paid or allowed to be paid through revenue reserves capital reserves cannot be used to pay dividends to the ordinary or preference share holders then we have capital reserve capital reserve we have two capital reserve basically uh, the one is share premium and another one is a revaluation reserve we have already discussed share premium previously uh, if a company issues a share that has a ordinary value or nominal value of $1 and if we are issuing these shares at 1.5 the extra 0.5 that the company is getting from its shareholder is being kept in a separate account known as share premium and another one is revaluation reserve whenever we revalue our non current assets uh, the gain that we are getting upon revaluation is known as revaluation reserve in this question also in note 2 there is a revaluation reserve adjustment so we have discussed so far two capital reserve one is share premium one is revaluation reserve and one is uh, two revenue reserves such as general reserves and retained earnings now why are we actually discussing the difference between revenue reserve and capital reserve uh, for the sake of this adjustment number one which is asking explain what is meant by keeping reserves in their most flexible form uh, I also told you previously that whenever we need to pay dividends dividends are only supposed to be paid from revenue reserve for that reason revenue reserves are also known as distributable reserve uh, now uh, there are two types of reserve one is revenue reserve known as distributable reserve and on the other end there is capital reserve which is undistributable reserve and now how can we keep the reserves in their flexible form because if we want to keep the reserves in their flexible form we must use revenue reserves in the end why because the company should have some flexibility so as to uh, on the payment of dividend if the company has enough revenue reserves in hand it will help the company to pay dividends now there are certain transactions that are non routine and one of which is bonus issue uh, what does bonus issue means bonus issue means the company is issuing shares to its shareholders free of cost now if we issue shares to general public uh, we make an entry that bank is debited because bank is an asset whenever an asset increases it is always debited and we credit our share capital account this is when we issue shares for some amount of money bank is debited and capital account is credited so in bonus issue there is no money coming into the business we still credit the share capital account but we cannot that we cannot debit bank account why because we are not getting any money on the issue of shares so we need to debit one of the reserves account and now the question arrives that which reserve account needs to be debited whether it is revenue reserve or it is capital reserve so the answer to this question is if we want to be flexible for the future we must save our revenue reserves for the rainy days means uh, whenever we want to pay dividend dividend is only allowed to be paid through revenue reserve also known as distributable reserve so whenever we need to use uh, any reserve for such transactions such as bonus issue we may use capital reserve first and then in the end we will be using revenue reserve because revenue reserve uh, will be uh, can be used in the future to pay dividends uh, and uh, cap uh, capital reserves cannot be used to pay dividends so this is the answer to the question that we must use revenue reserves uh, uh, before capital reserves uh, we may use capital reserve before revenue reserves in order to uh, save revenue reserve for the future that is distributable reserves you can also write this answer uh, the answer to this question is this means using capital reserves before revenue reserves in order to maintain distributable reserves so that the maximum future dividend can be paid now let me repeat it f for you guys once uh, whenever we need to make such a transaction such as bonus issue or any other non-routine transaction which reserve we must use first 
first of all we must use capital reserve why because capital reserves cannot be used for paying dividends therefore capital reserves are known as undistributable reserves therefore using capital reserve before revenue reserves in order to maintain distributable reserve because revenue reserves are known as distributable reserve they can be used in the future to pay dividends but the capital reserves cannot be used so that maximum future dividend can be paid uh, there is a simple example i give to my students when i explain this adjustment is that uh, you are on a trip to another city and you have some cash currency of the country you are visiting and you also have a checkbook with you now when uh, the the hotel where you stayed uh, fortunately the hotel owner was your uh, father's friend a friend of your father's and he recognized you uh, the and now you have two options you can uh, pay him through cash and you can also pay him through check so what will you prefer will you prefer paying him through cash or you will prefer paying him through check obviously you will prefer paying him through check uh, one more thing is that maybe you cannot you don't prefer to pay him anything because this is he is your uh, father's friend so jokes apart if you want to pay him uh, there are two options uh, you will uh, be saving cash because the cash is a scarce thing for you uh, in another city and no one will uh, take a check from you because no one knows you or your father in another city so therefore you will try to pay him through check because check is the least useful thing for you in another city so in the same manner if the company has an option to use revenue reserve and capital reserve both the company will use capital reserve first in order to save revenue reserve for uh, paying future dividend so i hope you understood this now let's move to the main part that is statement of changes in equity let me read the question for you first so we have already discussed there are these are the capital and re reserves account further information is given the draft profit for the year ended 31st december is 122800 uh, draft profit means that this is not the final profit there are some adjustments that need to be made in this profit figure and the secondly we have uh, property was revalued from 520 to 780 if the property is revalued then the difference of both of these figures will be credited to a new reserve account known as revaluation surplus then there are some other adjustments one is right issue one is payment of interim dividend one is bonus issue uh, and there are some other adjustments as well so the main requirement for this question is part b prepare a statement of changes in equity for vital for plc for the year ended 31st december now what you must do this uh, you must uh, print out this question the the pdf file for this question uh contains in the video description link uh, once you will click the description link in this video uh, you will uh, it will be a new pop up uh, there is a document in uh, saved in my google drive you may print that document or you may keep a snapshot in front uh maybe in the phone and you will be studying the question and solving this at once now i'm making the format for statement of changes in equity the format is available in the concepts video lecture for statement of change in equity now what we will do we will make a separate column for each equity item starting with ordinary share capital ordinary share capital as you may be aware is the amount of money invested by shareholders in the business in the company then we have a share premium column then there is a revaluation reserve column revaluation reserve is basically not given at the start of the year that is uh, the end of the previous year 2011 but there is an adjustment in note number 2 of this vitals ford plc question note number 2 that we have uh, revalued a property so therefore i'll be making a, a revaluation reserve account as well then we have general reserve then retained earning and the total column is discretionary so in the examination uh, you may or may not make a total equity column if the format is given then you uh, and if the total uh, column is there you need to fill it up and if the format does not contain and if there is no format given you have a choice you can make the equity column or you can avoid making it 
Now let's start with opening balances. We have we want to make a statement of change in equity for 2012, and the starting date will be balance at 1st January 2012. Now there are opening balances 2011 end of the year balances are given, which will become 2012 opening balances. That is balance brought down. We have a five hundred thousand dollars capital previously. We have a share premium column. Uh, have share premium amounts to 200,000 then we have a revaluation reserve we don't have at the start of the year then we have a re uh, general reserve that is 70,000 then retained earning opening balance is also given and now if I add all of these we will be getting a total of equity this is the total equity now I'm solving uh, transactions one by one first of all we need to calculate the profit the profit is given in the question uh, but in note one it mentions that it is a draft profit draft profit means this is not finalized there are some adjustments or errors that need to be taken care of so therefore I'll be adjusting this at the end of the question then uh, I have revaluation reserve adjustment revaluation reserve is on note 2 it is saying that property was revalued from 520,000 to 780,000 so we may take the difference between 520 and 780 that is 260,000. So if the property is revalued, the entry would be property account debit that the asset, when the asset increases, it will be debited and will be crediting a revaluation reserve account. If the revaluation reserve account is increased, the total equity column also need to be increased. Then we have a right issue. What does right issue means? Right issue means uh, we need to issue new shares to our existing shareholders in the proportion to their existing shareholding. So why does it is termed as a right issue? Means the existing shareholders have a right. Uh, what sort of right? Uh, right is that if the company needs more finance, if the company needs more capital, then the management that is board of directors must ask existing shareholders if they want to invest more in their company so this cannot take place that uh, we want the money and we must ignore we may ignore our existing shareholders and ask outside shareholders to invest in the business no because uh, they have a right the existing shareholders have a right that if a company requires amount then the existing shareholders first must be asked if they have or if they are willing to pay or if they are willing to invest more in their existing company so this is known as right, a right issue uh, the example uh, may be that uh, if you have a business and you want to invest more in your business if you want to expand that uh, you must not talk to your neighbor that are you willing to invest money in my business unless and until you have discussed this with your father because your father has a right uh, prior right so if you need if you need more finance you must ask your family uh, unless and until they, if they disagree that they do not want to invest in your business maybe they don't trust you and all that so therefore you can go to outsiders or friends and uh, other people okay so this is known as right issue i am discussing adjustment number uh, third adjustment number third says on 31st january 2012 a right issue of one share for every five held was made at a premium of 0.25 each right issue of one share for every five means whoever uh, has five shares of our company will be given one more share and this share will not be given to him or her free uh, instead they will be charged a 0.25 premium now what does premium mean premium means extra uh, you must heard of premium quality chocolates so what does premium mean this means going an extra mile and giving you something that uh, is not given by anyone else so the ordinary share value uh, ordinary share has a nominal value of one dollar but we are issuing a one dollar share for 1.25 now why i'm saying 1.25 is this we are charging an extra 0.25 that is a premium so you, we must say that how much uh, shares are there right now we have existing shares 500,000 the capital is also 500,000 and one share has a nominal value of one dollar this means number of shares are also 500,000 so if we multiply one upon five to if we apply 1 upon 5 to 500,000 we will get 100,000 new shares so 100,000 shares will be issued and the $1 that we are getting for the capital will be credited to capital account 
and 0.25 extra that we are getting on each share will be credited to premium account so 100,000 multiplied by $1 will be uh, the answer for ordinary share account and 100,000 multiplied by 0.25 will be the answer to premium account and the total amount will be 125,000 if we add these two or what uh, we need to do we need to multiply 100,000 multiplied by 1.25 in order to get a total value what I am suggesting that uh, we have issued uh, 100,000 shares of $1 each at 1.25 so $1 will be credited to capital account the extra $0.25 will be credited to premium account now let's uh, move to the next adjustment that is dividend paid so uh, dividend paid is adjustment number four we paid some interim dividend of 0 0.08 per share there are uh, two uh, dividends um, basically one is interim and one is final interim dividend is dividend that is paid during the year and the final dividend is dividend that is paid at the end of the year so there can be more than one interim dividend but the final dividend will be full and final at the end of the year and what happens that interim dividend is paid uh, to which year it relates so if you are starting in 2019 interim dividend will be paid in 2019s maybe uh, at the end of the each quarter one at 31st march and another at 30th june and another at 30th september and then the company will decide that final dividend for 2019 will also be paid but the final dividend for 2019 is basically paid in next year that is 2020 2020 no now if the interim dividend we have paid 0 0.08 per share now see previously we have 500,000 capital and similarly 500,000 shares and we uh, issued another 100,000 shares this makes the total of 600,000 shares and if we multiply 0 0.08 to 600,000 uh, we will get a dividend value of 48,000 so dividend is basically the return that is given to shareholders for investing money into the business uh, so the dividend is always paid from uh, a revenue reserve there are two revenue reserve one is general and one is retained earning so if we don't have the enough money in retained earning we can also use general reserve to pay dividend but first of all we will be uh, debiting retained earning in order to pay dividend so these share premium and revaluation these are capital reserves these accounts uh, are not to be used in order to pay dividend okay so if the retained earning column decreases so as our equity total equity decreases then we have a bonus issue we have already discussed what does bonus issue means bonus issue is also known as scrip issue s c r i p scrip issue or bonus issue means uh, that we are issuing uh, free shares to our existing shareholders in proportion to their existing shareholdings now uh, i may uh, read the adjustment note number 5 on 31st October a bonus issue of shares of one for every four held was made one for every four means we will uh, give we will issue one share for every shareholder that already has four shares so one upon four is basically 25 percent holding so we will be issuing 25 percent new shares to our existing shareholders and the directors have decided to keep the reserves in their most flexible form we have already discussed what does the word flexible form means in a adjustment number a now previously we have 500,000 capital then we issued right issue capital worth 100,000 that is 600,000 now what do we need to do uh, we need to multiply 1 upon 4 to 600,000 so 600,000 times 1 upon 4 or 25% becomes 150,000 we need to issue 150,000 new shares or one share is already $1 uh, nominal value or we can say par value ordinary value is $1 so 150,000 dollar capital increases one thing you need to remember is that bonus in in a bonus issue uh, the premium should never be charged so premium is basically the extra amount that we are charging so if we are giving shares to shareholders free of cost we are not even charging the nominal value of the shares so how come we'll be charging premium to them so premium is something that is extra uh, uh, I can uh, explain you with this example maybe uh, your uncle works uh, in a cricket board 
and and there is a cricket match happening in your city and there is a final maybe be- between pakistan and india and you are so excited and and you call your uncle and you went to your, his home and you ask him for some tickets of the uh, uh, vip lounge or whatever you say that the stadium and your uncle is he is a very generous uncle unlike unlike most of our uncles so he gave you 10 vip enclosure tickets and and now you are asking your uncle that uncle normally this ticket cost 100 dollar each so how much premium or own it is also known as own uh, in everyday life how much own you will charge uh, to me so your uncle is saying beta i am the chairman of the cricket board and you are asking me about the premium or uh, am i a what a ticket blacker or what i am blacking the tickets so what do you think of your uncle so your uncle is giving you tickets free of cost if something is given to you free of cost you may never ask what about uh, the premium the premium is you basically cons- considered at someone uh, in the market or in front of the cinema is uh, blacking the tickets and uh, if he is selling 100 dollar ticket for 110 though this mean the 10 extra this is charging for premium so if your uncle is giving you ticket free of cost he will never ask for premium because he is not even asking for the original price that is 100 dollar okay so in a bonus issue, Issue, there is never premium used so if the ordinary share capital increases uh, i have also already discussed previously that in terms of bonus issue there is no cash that is raised by the company uh, this mean we are giving the shares free of cash similarly uh, if your uncle is not getting any money so there is no uh, cash or bank coming into the company so if you are crediting capital we need to debit something and now instead of debiting the bank we will use uh, share premium and the revaluation reserve account so i have already discussed what does the word uh, means uh, keeping reserves in the most flexible form if you want to keep the reserve flexible we may not use revenue reserve first big why because revenue reserves uh, can be of future use to pay dividend so these re- uh, reserves are of no use to us this share premium revaluation will be using this first first of all there is a sequence that is used once uh, we will be using share premium first and if the share premium is already exhausted then we can use revaluation reserve if the revaluation reserve also gets finished then we can use general reserve and the in the end we will be using uh, retained earning because this is the most precious thing that the company has so we need bonus issue 150000 will be using share premium as you can see there is enough amount in the share premium account so there is no need to go to the second third or fourth item we can use this and if the share premium is uh, exhausted then we can use revaluation reserve and thirdly general reserve uh, if you want to pay dividend we will be using retained earning first then general reserve but the dividend uh, cannot be paid from these two but for the bonus issue can be paid from all these four but uh, we will be using uh, capital reserve first and then we'll be moving to revenue reserve so in bonus issue as you can see there is no wealth created by the company this is just that that uh, if we take out money from one our pocket uh, from our right pocket and put it in our left pocket this means neither we are rich or nor we are poor okay Uh, then transfer to general reserve there is one more adjustment that is in note 6 in 31st december 40000 was transferred to general reserve now if you are transferring some money into the general reserve account the general reserve increases and the account that uh, is used to transfer the general reserve uh, is retained earning we will always be debiting uh, retained earning and crediting general reserve account again in this transaction also there is no new wealth created because we are transferring money from one pocket to another transfer to general reserve so these are the adjustment now we have some other adjustments uh, one relating to profit see the profit that is used in this uh, statement of change in equity is the final profit that is after interest and tax also known as profit for the year uh, we'll be getting this figure from income statement company income statement now uh, the profit that is given in the question in note number 1 is draft profit draft profit is the profit that needs some adjustments to be made to it uh, and in note 7 it is saying on 5th january it was discovered that a customer who owed 4200 at year end has been declared bankrupt now if the customer has been declared bankrupt this means the customer's biz- uh, is out of business and he does not have enough assets to pay off its liabilities now uh, Uh, we have lost the money so therefore it is a bad debt for us 
bad debt or irrecoverable debt reduces our profit because it is an expense so it needs to be deducted from profit so then it was also discovered that goods inventory at year end with a cost of 3000 have been water damaged and could now only be sold for 600 uh, now there is an is that is being applied to this uh, this is is2 international accounting standard is2 inventory suggests that inventory shall be valued at lower of cost and nrv so the cost is the original price paid by the company and the nrv is net realizable value net realizable value uh, is fair value minus cost to sell fair value is the amount that that can be generated by selling this inventory item and cost to sell means uh, the payment that needs to be made in order to make that sale happen means if we are uh, bearing uh, delivery cost or transportation cost or if the item needs to be repackaged or repair or something so this is the cost to sell so if the inventory item that we bought is for 3000 and now could be sold for only 600 the lower amount is 600 that now we can see there is a loss of 2400 that we are suffering we have bought this for 3000 and it can only be sold for 600 so there is a loss of 2400 that needs to be charged to income statement so the final profit figure is 116200 so 116200 profit will be uh, credited to retained earning so profit for the year is always credited to retained earning if the retained earning increases our total equity also increases now we can uh, we are able to calculate the closing figures for the statement of financial position that is 31st december uh, the, originally the capital was 500,000 we issued new shares worth 100,000 in terms of right issue and we issued new shares uh, for free that is bonus issue now we add all of the uh, whole of the column where it means the total share capital is now 750,000 again uh, we will be adding share premium and they will be deducting this because we made a bonus issue through the share premium account then we have a revaluation reserve then general reserve then retained earning if I, I add all of these and now uh, all of these uh, horizontal figures add up to this total figures and all of these vertical figures total equity column also add up to this so this is a check this total figure is a check that all of the items in each of the columns are also uh, used uh, also written here in the total equity column so this was the statement of changes in equity and lastly in this question I can also help you make a balance sheet extract now what does balance sheet extract means uh, you may skip this part this uh, this is an IES international accounting standard uh, there are lectures available on my YouTube channel for IES uh, 10 is applied in this question so I'm not discussing international accounting standard right now uh, I'm making a statement of financial position extract now what does extract means extract means this is not a complete statement of financial position this is only a small part of statement of financial position uh, if you have made balance sheet previously you may be aware that we are always starting with assets and there are non-current asset first and then there are current asset there are three column for non-current asset cost accumulated depreciation and netbook value then there are total assets after assets there comes capital and liabilities so if the if there is a capital section and in, in a sole trader the capital is made as opening capital at profit for the year less drawing and in the manufacturing account question there is also the same format opening capital at profit less drawing in a partnership question in the capital section there is no such thing as opening capital at profit less drawing we only mention capital accounts and current accounts and in the company account question the statement of financial position the equity section is made differently therefore I am making uh, this for you this is not required in the original question but I am making this for your practice uh, we will write equity and reserves in this question we will be writing equity and reserves and all of these items that we previously discussed in statement of change in equity all of these closing values they are mentioned in a statement of financial position equity column uh, but the thing is that uh, the language or the format that is used in the question is always used in statement of financial position if you can see in the question it is writ written 500,000 ordinary shares but at the end of the year we have issued new shares uh, in terms of right issue and bonus issue so this makes the total of 750,000 ordinary shares and dollar one each is also need to be written because the same story that the examiner is telling us we need to uh, copy paste here 
okay and the total value of the 750,000 shares is also 750,000 now uh, after the capital account maybe preference shares are also there ordinary shares are also there there comes uh, capital reserves that is one is revaluation reserve again the closing value for revaluation is in 260,000 then there is a share premium account that is the closing value 75,000 then there is a general reserve we have already calculated all these closing values at year end then we have a retained earning also known as accumulated profits uh, and if we add all of these figures this total amount is known as total shareholder funds now this is important if you write this label examiner gives an extra credit for this total shareholder funds is worth one mark now this is the balance sheet format for a company the assets portion is the same the capital section is like this and the liability section is again the same and if the question specifically asks for uh, also show capital employed so capital employed means the total amount of money invested in the business either by owners or by outsiders now if I add the debentures or loan in this amount I'll be getting total capital employed account so I hope students you are able to understand or grasp the topics behind or the concepts behind statement of changes in equity and if you think this video was useful kindly do press the thumbs up button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't and also refer to your other friends thank you